Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Donnerail Park. It is now September, which means summer has gone. And what a summer it has been. Met Aaron has described this summer as the dullest summer on record, for Dublin Airport at least, but the vast majority of the country are well below the average of the normal sunshine during this time period. So how did I get on uh, with the install that I had? It's been installed in my house for about two months now. Um, and in this episode, I'm gonna just go through how I've been in the last two months and why I picked the equipment that I did. Now, in order to avoid it looking like I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, I decided to go for a walk in Donnerill Park. So why don't you come with me? So just a little bit of a recap. So two months ago, a little over two months ago, I had 3.2 kilowatt installed on my house in the form of 10 320 watt solar panels. That was all attached to a five kilowatt uh, Solex inverter and uh, two 6.3 kilowatt hour batteries. Attached to all that was uh, a EPS switchover um, emergency switch so emergency power so I can actually run my house in case of a power cut as well as a my energy eddy to warm my water and it all ties into the my energy hub which also includes my zappy car charger you can see where I'm getting at I had a, a big install the main focus of this install was to try and be as self-sufficient as I can or use as much of the energy that my solar panels are generating as I can. The main reason for this is that currently in Ireland we do not have a feed-in tariff. Now it is rumoured to come in 2020, probably 2021 now thanks to Corona, and, um, but it is due to, it is due to come. And saying that, the rumours are that it probably will not be very high. So how did I get on in the last two months? Well, it hasn't been entirely trouble free. Soon after the actual system was installed, the battery, it became apparent that the battery was doing strange things. The battery was never really reaching 100%. Uh, it, it was, there was a few jumps here and there. And uh, after a bit of troubleshooting by energy wise, which was very quickly, by the way, uh, it was determined that it needed a firmware upgrade. So they contacted Solex, who Solex actually remotely logged in to my inverter and did a firmware upgrade. Um, <laughs> And since then, the system has been pretty much trouble free. The other things that I noticed was that uh, after the system was installed, the eddy that I have for using uh, hot water, for heating hot water, was kicking in regularly. So whenever I boiled the kettle, the, as soon as the kettle would stop, the eddy would kick in and would start heating the water. It would do that for about a minute or two before it eventually stopped, and I always felt that it was draining a little bit of the of, of the of the power coming in. So I had to change a few settings on the Eddy. Uh, I'll overlay the settings sort of you know up here. I'll show you exactly what I changed. It had to do with the delay setting and it had to do with the export margin. So what I changed it to was to give a 20 second delay and to have, I think the export margin is 100 watt, uh, but also that the, um, the minimum export had to be 200 watt so that it could actually detect a proper export over just the occasional adjustment because that's what was happening. As soon as my kettle would stop, it would actually uh, the, the 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 inverter that site had was providing three kilowatt, and it all of a sudden disappeared. So it started to export it, and the eddy just picked that up as genuine export instead of just you know excess energy going into the ether. 
Um, since then, it's been pretty good. And I do think that uh, the eddy is a really good idea, but it can be a little bit hard to make sure that it distinguishes genuine export over just the incasual overflow. So welcome to John Rail Park. Uh, I like to go here on a Sunday morning just for some relaxation and a walk. As you saw earlier, it's September now, and that means summer is officially over. And in that summer, we've had two named storms, uh, above average rainfall, below average sunshine. We've had a ton of normally not very good stuff for solar panels. But how did I get on? The short answer is pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. I think I was about 73% self-powered in July and about 60 something percent self-powered in August. Kind of gives you a bit of a indication as to which month was the worst for the weather, August. One of the biggest reasons that I'm actually not 100% self-powered is actually the electric car, but I'll go over that a little bit later on possibly in a different episode, because I think it actually deserves a separate episode. I'll uh, show you a little bit more of Donnerill Park now whilst we have a chat as to how I actually got on. Like I said, it's September and the weather has been pretty bad. In fact, the weather has been so bad that I actually still don't know what the maximum capacity is that my system can generate. I haven't had a perfectly sunny day. Now, today is pretty good, but it's September and that kind of means that the efficiency is going to be less. The sun will be lower on the horizon, the amount of daylight hours will be less. Still not peak performance, but I guess I'll have to wait until next year to find out what the peak performance actually is. Now, according to EnergyWise, Ireland gets about four perfect sunny days a year. Four. That's not a lot. Now, a lot of people could be put off by that, but there is a saying that I like to use, which is called, perfection is the enemy of good. Whilst we don't get a lot of perfection, we get a lot of good. So this is the top of the long walk, that's Donneril House in the distance, and a day like today it's absolutely stunning up here. And that brings me to one of the better days that I've had that I could find uh, to give you a good example as to how my system is performing. So this was the 22nd of July. The 22nd of July wasn't a very particularly good day from a solar perspective, but the 21st of July was. As a result, the battery was never actually emptied and I started the day off with a, a good percentage left in the battery. As a result, I was able to actually run on the battery the entire day as the battery still was being topped up uh, by uh, the solar panels. I managed to do some laundry and run a, a dry and all that kind of stuff. And it was done pretty much entirely on solar power. So the 14th of August was a pretty bad day. It started off very, very dull and the battery actually was very, very low because of the day before. So it never really filled up. But even, be even though the day was very, very dull, I still managed to actually power the house during daylight hours from solar pretty much the entire day. But come evening, as soon as the sun was gone, it didn't take long for the battery to drain and the rest of the day was just done from grid power. 
But it was good to see that even on a dull day, during daylight hours, I'm able to run my house from solar power. Will that be the case when winter comes? I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. So that was the good and the bad. Now it's time for something that I would consider a tiny bit ugly. Bear with me, it's not all bad. And that's basically charging my car. Charging my car is not as good as I was hoping it would be, but I did get warned by Energy Wise that this could be the case. Let me explain. Now, like so many electric car owners, I really like the idea of driving my car on solar power. And there's something just really nice about knowing that you're driving on 100% electric or 100% renewable energy. In reality is not that good though. It primarily has to do with the fact that my electric car uses about as much electricity as my house does for an entire week. So it's not possible for me to get a full charge on my car unless I have an absolutely massive solar array which I don't have the space for. That doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It works very well. It just means that, again, it's not perfect, but it's good. So that's about it for this episode. Before I go, I just want to acknowledge Energy Wise. I want to give them a big thanks uh, for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in solar power, battery storage, heat pumps, and all that kind of stuff, and you live in Munster, give them a ring and they'll look after you. Just tell them that you saw this video. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment down below and we'll talk to you soon.